Thank you both Jones. for being here. What, what happened to everybody? Where's Joel's? Well, Where's Cam at? You know, Joel's um yes. has a situation where you gotta oh, get um that's yeah, shout out certain Joel's. signatures before he can come outside. And the the great part is that we have an album coming out on Thanksgiving yes. with everybody on it, all the four brothers. Um we yes. have a Big concert on Black Friday up in Apollo, uh, up in Harlem. So that yes. should be fun. Um, I'm really excited for that. Yeah. Thank you. I'm Ooh. excited for it, Likewise. Too. I'm a fan I, as well. I, <laughs> I think it's going to be a, a hell of a night. Diplomatic um, Ties. Yes. Indeed. That's the name of the album. Mm -hmm. It's been 14 years since you all were back together. Yes. Right? On yes. an album. Yes. Yeah, on all an album. back together on, uh, as a collective how did you all work together? Album. How was this vibe in comparison to when you first were in the studio working on, you know, in the 14 years ago? I'm sure the vibe is a little bit different, but well, the magic is there. But how was it this time around? Well, the vibe 14 years ago was the very beginning. So naturally we were uh, all in the studio at that time doing the music uh, in the studio together. This With technology and the way things is have done have have become in the future it's, it's much easier to uh, do a record and send it out mp3 but we've been in the studio together we've been sending records to each other me and cam always in the studio like i was in joelle's house last night to like eight in the morning True. finishing up some records so, you know it's a great experience just right to, here the brotherhood is, is what i'm really excited about i mean like everybody can see what has been going on for the past few years ups and downs and things like that miscommunication but just to know that we on the same page and we see eye to eye before the music or without any music, man, that was the most important conversation we had. Like, mm -hmm. we'd rather not even do any music if that means we would lose our friendship and things like that, so. It must have been hard for you, Freaky, because you're in the middle during the downs, right? True. How, how do you deal with this? Is this like, hey, Jim, hey, Cam, let's work this out? Like, how, because we never get to really hear, I guess, your side and Joelle's. How do you deal with being in you know, the middle of the crossfire. Well, dealing with that situation is, it was easy for me because I really never believed it. Because mm. when I, I had went to college for three years and- um, why, you I, do, why you say it like that, college? Because uh. I went to the school of hard knocks. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when I came home, this, this had transacted already. So mm. I was already in the thought of we were together. So when I came out, it never it never got out of my brain. So mm -hmm. I never believed the fact that they could honestly be upset with each other. So I, like I said, I was doing silly things. I was on tour with Jim when he was doing the balling thing. I'll tell Jim is my mother, but it'd be Cam. <laughs> <laughs> and they start talking and so forth and so on. But that's really what kept me involved with making sure they was all right. Is I, I couldn't believe it. So. Right. This is going to sound cliche, but I didn't believe it either. Just because it didn't make sense. You guys are brothers. When I saw you and Cam, I literally stopped paying attention. I was like, they'll be fine. Don't yeah. worry. It, I'm like, Cam ain't killed Jim mother. And, 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 and Jim ain't killed Cam mother. And like, you can't be that serious. I promise you, Jim, I'm not this trying to me. downplay what was happening at that time. I'm just saying from the outside looking in as fans, I don't know. I just felt like it was just that brothers. Like, that's just what it is at times. Ups and downs, you don't see eye to eye. I mean, a lot of times we saw it play out. But ever since the reunion last year, that's where I want to pick it up from. Everything's been positive. You've been working together. So how did that come about from your end, Jim? Like, was that a call to Cam? Because at this point, you both of you weren't seeing eye to eye. So how did the reunion come together and uh. then getting to this point where we're on such a great track. The reunion came together from a guy named Tuma. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tuma wanted to do um this Spotify concert that was revolved around diplomats and unity of different groups that was in the industry and um that paved the way that we're doing our thing. Sorry, I'm just right. adding some extra to it cuz you're being real yes. humble. Yes. But yes. Um so you know, if anybody knows Tumi, he's probably one of the most honest guys yeah. in this industry. And a dear friend of both me and Cam, and he kind of in, in, very instrumental in have, getting us back together and where we at now. And um, just having that understanding when Tumi put that call in and me and Cam had to have a conversation, um, it was like already understood. Like You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't no long conversation about right. what was done it was just we grown men and we know where we at now in life and 
the communi- the communication has been there. And that's one of the biggest things for me out of everything is the communication. Like us seeing eye to eye above anything else, whether the music get done or not, that we maintain who we are, maintain our, our brotherhood and shit like that. Cause it's it's hard to come by. I mean, like everybody know, I know these gentlemen since we've been ten to teenagers and things like that, and to be grown men now and right break so many barriers and sell millions and millions of records and go all over the world and you know you feel that when there's a little discrepancies and things like that so to be here now actually having a, a dope project to put out for the people mm-hmm. on thanksgiving and know the music is fire like we got some got some dope features on it like we got um we got tory lanes on the record uh-huh <laughs> <laughs> we got the locks on the record. Uh huh. Yes. We got um belly on the record. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Two chains. Talk about it. <laughs> um, I believe uh, there's a record with Dave East and nice. yeah, yeah, to get yeah, 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 yeah. Um, few records. Um, yeah, a few. Yeah, Etc. Dot dot dot. Right. Shouts to Murder on the Beats. Yeah. Murder on the Beats. It's on the single that we have with Belly, so you know, we it's been fun. The music is oh, good. God. I'm excited. I remember during the reunion show, and I remember when everybody was out on stage, ASAP Rocky said that he's been waiting his whole life to be able to perform on stage with you all. How did that make you all feel? Um, I was still outside at that time. They had us stuck outside, but... um, (laughs) Why were you outside? What happened? It was too much much craziness going on. It was pandemonium outside with so many people trying to get in. Ah. The venue was sold out. The fire marshals was there. So getting me and Cam in was a little bit extra. But, you know, we know I know ASAP Rocky for years. And, you know, as a kid coming up from Harlem and having some fun in Harlem, you know, to be there while we was at our prom and watching us go through the motions. And then that was being an inspiration for him, for fashion and music and things yes. like that. And oh, yeah. In turn, him being so successful and at a level of the playing field that we we all on the same playing field. It's like when your idols become rivals and mm. you, you get to go to the same, mm. get to play against each other at, at, at the same arena. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's kind of, it's a dope feeling. I, I, I know how that feels. We've been in them situations a lot of times with some of the people in the game that we, we grew up admiring and, you know what I mean? Get to rub shoulders with them and things like that. Oh, so Who is that person for you both? In the industry? Yeah, like idol wise, that you were just like, Wow, I look up to them and then now we're in the same conversation. Um Snoop was one of those people for yeah. me. Bone Bone Thugs. Oh Dad, my he took one mine. of those people that for was, me. He took mine. He, my, that's that was mine yours, was. Bone yeah. Thugs? Bone Thugs. Bro. Um Do you remember those yeah. conversations when you ran into them? I always tell the people yeah. that are my favorites, like Wu Tang, Raekwon, and I always tell them about it. Every mm-hmm. time I tell Snoop, I always tell him about it. <laughs> Busy Bone, I got yeah. to do some records with him, but you know, I always let them know about it. Like even when I see like people like New Edition and Ralph Tresman, and like I always tell these people that I grew up, yeah, and it was a part of my life and affected my life because music is a big part of your life, whether you yes. like it or not. Like. You, they'll start playing music right now from 1982, and we all sit down here and, and sing it word for word. Like <laughs> you know, it stuck with you, so you know. So I, I, every time I get a chance to see people that I grew up on or people that I admire, I definitely let them know. Are there still people that you know you're starstruck around, or you just like wow, they're a legend that you get excited about, or you pass that? I don't ever feel that as true artists that you ever pass up because you know we do this because we love music I, I, I just, I, there's a few people that i think that are cool like i think Wiz khalif is cool right yeah. i think two chains is cool but right. you got him yeah i think i think, got him on the album. I, I think meek mills is cool yeah. right you know what i mean uh, it's a few people that i just think that are outright cool like i like them kids the kid gunner and uh the uh-huh. other kid that drip too hard like I think they cool. They got a lot of swag. Little baby. Yeah, little baby. They got like a lot of swag to them. I, I think Migos is is, is super oh, yeah. cool. They like Definitely. superheroes to me. They, they, I mean, so, I, I mean, I have no problem when it comes to. Showing love. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, there's some people that I think that are dope. I mean, there's not too many people that I admire outright anymore because I'm a, I'm a grown man now. Like, right. the people that I admire are uh, in the dead or in jail or, you know, mm-hmm. been out mm-hmm. the game for a minute, but. There are a lot of a lot of these people I think that are very cool, and, yeah. I, and I tell them that every time I get a chance to see them. How about for you? 
who do you think is, you know, that you look at, that you enjoy seeing out here doing? Well, besides everything that he mentioned. Shoot. I know, right? I, I love still, that, though. I, see, I like to get real crazy and dance around. So I, when I see, like, Chris Brown and stuff right. like that, he, he makes me run back and forth. I still, <laughs> I still, I still, I still admire, well, I always have Diddy still because he, hasn't, he right. hasn't moved past anything. He's still right there, 2018, shaking. So every time I see him, I'm like, I know we still got it shaking. You know what <laughs> I mean? I know we still moving. You know what I mean? And, yeah. yeah, Diddy Diddy's get it popping. Diddy's so, a good one. Diddy, whole people like yeah, that. Yeah, whole like they all so of these. So many barriers that did so much for the game. Just about yeah. Messing being with the T. first I. people. Mm -hmm. So many so. things. When Dipset, when you all got together, did you realize the impact that it was going to be on music, on fashion? You know, because I'm always so mm. curious if you realize it was going to take off like that. Mm, nah, you never thought that in a million years it would take off the way it took off. Mm. I mean, it was just so much to be, ground. To be, okay. We're happy to be involved in, in a chance at getting inside the game. I mean, we started fresh out of high school, make sure them got kicked out of college, end up <laughs> lucky enough, luckily getting a mm. deal. Can follow suit, luckily getting deals, and both of them were turned into platinum artists and. Cam kept the ball rolling. Like he, he looked out. He looked out for his niggas. He made sure that his niggas mm -hmm. were straight. Like once he got to a point of success where he could bring us up, he bring us in, and and the dipper mess was for him. And at that time, we didn't think about what type of big ass impact we could have. We was thinking about the money and how fly we could get and doing all the things that <laughs> exactly. we know how to do from Harlem. And right. I was just the real happy to be there. We <laughs> just was happy. Make, like. make sure we stay fly as shit. Yeah. And that was that was that was the moves we, we was rolling with. We had this thing called NWA rules. We mm -hmm. was fascinated by the way NWA came into the game mm. and the way they pushed people around and the image they portrayed and, and and how infectious they was. And we always said the NWA rules and it, it worked for us. Mm. I think we kind of had our own lane of what some of the things that NWA did for the industry. Mm. Yeah, East Coast and WA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At what point did you realize that Dipset was making this impact? Was there a certain moment, whether it was on tour, at a show, a call that you got, and you can take a second to think about it, when you realize, oh, oh. There's numerous amounts of females out there that do have diplomat tattoos. Oh, now yes. I don't know if they covered them up or, or got them taken off or, but it's a- the, it's Ladies a, are getting tats. Ladies, yes. Fact, and men. I, ladies, the cover, I, the cover, the album, our album cover for diplomat mm -hmm. Diplomatic Ties is a picture of a lady who has a diplomat tattoo the in the bird. middle of her chest. For, a big bird too but i mean that's <laughs> i mean we would we would go in different states and you know i got a lot of tattoos so i got tattoos all over in different places and it'd just be chicks and they'd be like oh i'm gonna get the diplomat tattoo and, it's just, and, and do you do you remember the first one that you saw um and you were shocked when you're like oh my gosh they actually got a tattoo um I, what's the white what's the what's the white girl name that that uh that went with us to um to the tattoo pool? I forgot her name. She got the yeah. big diplom she had the, the one of the first diplomat logos, so it was just like whoa. Was it out here that, yeah. that mm -hmm. you saw? Wow. When they locked down the, the mall for us. We mm. was in the mall, we had just, to run and get up out of there. I said, Oh nah, this is it. Yeah, we had a lot of extra moments. Yeah. It was good. It's still good. Yeah, I mean, it's still great. To yeah. be here, we, to persevere and be able to reinvent yourself and still be here and still be relevant and still be lit as as they like to say. I mean, it's a great feeling because it ain't easy to be lit out here. I, I've I've seen so many artists come and go. Some of your favorites, oh, some of the man. some of the ones with some of the biggest hits, and they a dub right now. Not to say it like that, but they yeah. a dub. Like you know what I mean? When it comes to the industry, they are like oh yeah, a dub dub. Yep, yeah. How have how do you feel that you've all persevered? How like what was the if you know what it was? But how were you able to keep this longevity? Because like you said, it's hard. This is not easy to continuously reinvent yourself. I mean, to continuously be moving by the, by the grace of God and mm. and Harlem. I mean, I say Harlem. When I say Harlem, I mean that because you have to be so creative coming up in Harlem and. The reason right. why we stayed so fly is because we didn't have a lot to work with, but we made it look like we had it all. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, ain't lying. We 
take two hundred dollars and make it look like we had on a nineteen hundred dollar outfit. Yes. You know what yes. I mean? Like <laughs> it was different things, and that same mind frame is what we took into this game. And to stay above the, stay one step of, one foot ahead of the cusp, you got to be creative and you got to know how to reinvent yourself. And we we pretty good at that. I mean, and that's through different things, television, movies. Like you mix it all together and you and you stay afloat and until it all comes back around, like we have here, and we back on the scoreboard about to put another album out do you get judgmental at all when you see someone who can't dress nice and i just wanted to know only because you're so outspoken jim but you know or do you ever just like oh they could have yeah i'm 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 critical like that like fashion is a great i I love fashion z could tell you since since we've been in elementary school that's been one of the things i've been good at is is getting fresh so naturally when i see somebody who think they dripping and they just slipping. It just, it's funny to me. Because you got to keep in mind, everybody doesn't come outside to be fresh. Everybody's right. not a fashion head. But you got a bunch of these people in this industry that think they be so fly and they right. be looking like a dove. And I just be wanting to tell them, like, oh, man. like, <laughs> But, you know, that's just my personal, you know. But I snap on me, a few dudes. We from Harlem. We love snapping. So, you know, if you're a dove, you're a dove. Yeah, if I got some kind of out there, it's like Zeke, nah, 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 nah. Go put the yeah, mother joint. Yeah, I always make, I yeah, always make Zeke right. change his clothes and go get outfits. <laughs> like, go, go to the store, go get a new outfit. Go in my closet, go get a new outfit. <laughs> he come in with a whole new outfit on. I'd be like, that's a dove right there. You're not going to the show with that fit on. Just Damn, switch it up. Yeah. Nah, yeah, I, I gotta I make sure it. my name. Since no, we've been in high school, it's been yeah. like that. Like I gotta make sure we look good. If I got sneakers on, uh, if, and my niggas ain't got nothing, I'ma try to buy them a mm-hmm. pair of sneakers, or I'ma give them a pair of new sneakers that I had in the crib. Cause we gotta, mm-hmm. we gotta be lit. Like we got, we we gotta move like we on the same level. No matter what it is, like I can't look good and you look bad. That's bad representation. Mm-hmm. I love that you look out for each other. Yeah, I love yeah, just like hearing that, that right now because I don't, maybe that's. Mm-hmm. Where I come from is that, you know, I'm not going to be good unless everybody around me is right. good. That's like a it, fact. it doesn't feel right when you are good and, you know, you look a certain way, but your friends. Looking crazy. Yeah, no. You yeah. look crazy. You look crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Exactly. You, it's because it's like, how are you going to be out here doing all this and you're. You know, your people are looking exactly. like that. And it's natural, though. You right. know what I'm saying? So that's a great... Because I'll be thinking I'm fly, though. Don't think I'm just coming <laughs> in with no holy <laughs> shoe. Yeah, no, nah, it's not like I'm coming in, my shoes run dead. Nah, right. I'm fresh, clean, on top, right. head to toe. He like, nah. So wait, Jim, are you keeping <laughs> up with the trends? Or is it more nah, like you just do what trend. you want to do? do what, he's the trend. I, I do what I please. I, I mean, got me on that Mike, one. Wait, 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 go. I mean, I do, I do what I want. I, I dress how I feel. Like, I mean, if anybody's followed me through my career, I mean, you, you, you understand. I've, I've changed the, I've changed the, the face of fashion. Me and Kanye, and I say that because it's either you got a little bit of Kanye with you, or you got a little Jim Jones with you. No matter how you look at it or what you right. got on, you, it, it started from us changing the game from the rock and roll look and slimming down the clothes and going into that whole field, which just revolved and revolved really into, does. or evolved into slimmer and slimmer. And then besides that, then you, or you either got the, glo- the glamorized backpacker look that Kanye has right. gave, given to the game. There's no in between. It's either B-Boy chic, which we bring to the table, or the Kanye certified backpacker look. And I say that because you got to look at people like Virgil, Virgil oh, comes yes. under Kanye. You understand? Mm-hmm. Like, even though he's the man right now, right. but the, under the family tree, he comes up. Like, you look at Wheezy and all of them, when he, like, that, that comes under the Dipset family tree. Like, they changed their whole style because of a lot of things we did. And I hate to talk about it like that. I'd rather other people talk about it, but it is what it is. You know what but I mean? But no, I, I think everyone sees it like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think it's important that toot, we. We could toot our own yeah, home. Yeah, exactly. all right. It's all Listen, right, boy. Jim, yeah. you've been in the game. Hey, man. Y'all been in the game too long not to accept your greatness. You know, I just had this conversation. Actually, it was Swiss Beats. He was just here. And he Mm. was saying that's probably the hardest thing, you know, for him that he had to learn is accepting his greatness. Right. And I think that applies to really everybody. And I think just even hearing you, Jim, because it's like weird to give to acknowledge something that you've done. Yeah, right? I mean, I, you, I, I I shy away from things like that. I don't know. It's kind of yeah. it, it, it kind of creeps me out. I mean, because you're um, humble, but you don't have to be. Mm-hmm. I need to be. I've I've been a. Uh, I'm in the interview, babe. I'll call you back. I love this, by the way. All right. Yeah, because you see that all phone. men can learn from this. 
when that your woman calls? That two minute rule kicking, yeah. boy. You got a problem because I could be dead ass on this interview. And in two minutes, if she called back and I don't pick in the <laughs> third call as a threat, Ooh. like, oh, nigga, yeah. do what you're doing. <laughs> Man, stay yeah. right there. Nah, fuck that. Stay right there. Oh, you want to die? Kill yourself. Like, I was in the booth last night. It's like <laughs> seven in the morning. And she called my phone like seven in the morning. I'm in the booth. And she, one phone call I ain't pick up on the other phone. Now she called uh, Joel's like, he laughing in the booth like, uh oh. Dog. She called the other phone like, pick the fucking phone up. He picks the phone up. She replies, oh, you want to die? He like, nah, it's Joel's. I don't want to die. Let me get this nigga. But it's good, man. You know, you gotta, yeah. you, you, we all need some balance and boundaries and things like that. And, and, and if you got a good lady, she keeps you on point, especially in this mm. in this wicked game. It's, there's so many temptations and things yeah. out there that, can, that take you astray from your household. And it's good to have somebody that's to keep you in line and, and give you the freedom at the same time to do what you need to do and, and get the money and bring it home. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was going to say, a lot of us women, we love your relationship. And oh. that, we, you know, just because in hip hop, it's, we don't really see the fellows really hold it down for their woman. They, we just don't. It's never been, uh, I don't know how to say special, but I felt like with you, Jim, we saw that and we appreciate that. Because, like you said, it is nice to have someone who's going to hold mm -hmm. you down, keep you on track, do, and just be the backbone and and love you unconditionally. I mean, you... Uh, not to make you a softie, nah, but we a softie, love it. But, you know, you got a good woman. She, 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 she just as hard as your niggas at the end of the day, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And... I don't care if a, if a guy said he's single. He got one. He got one lady that he really he really fucks with like that. You know what I mean? And it's you know niggas always got their pride to be to be macho and be fly. And that's the machoest thing you could probably could do is give it up to a person when they holding you down. So you know, I always make sure I do that. All right. Well, that, the interview's done. You hear that, guys? Drops okay. the mic. <laughs> that was so sweet, though. Truth. But it's so rare. Why do you think it's hard for men to express themselves? I like mean, that? we in the game was wicked. So nobody's an angel on earth and shit like that so i try to make sure i project who i love as much as i can like you know what i mean above mm. all within within this wicked game so we no won't be no confusion won't be none of that y'all know where i'm at with it like it ain't you mm. dig i'm tunnel vision like yeah you know what i mean like <laughs> and that's just because it's hard if you do it in this game and it's wicked. Mm. I, I, I saw what I'm going to say that this is a very, very wicked Super industry. Super wicked, I mean, no, you know. If you got some mm. money or if you handsome or Both. even for ladies, like it's vice versa, it's the same thing. Oh, it's, it's the same. probably mm -hmm. even worse for ladies because, you know what I mean? It's so convenient. It's huh. so accessible. Yeah. It's it's just, and the game will have uh, play tricks on you if you're not yes. careful. Yes. All, every day it plays a trick on you. All types of tricks. Every, yeah. every day it plays a trick on you. So I saw you with someone, but you're not. Right, exactly. <laughs> How about, are you in a relationship? relationship right now yes Zios? i am as well Good. got my little ring look at that on. hold it. see i love this i <laughs> love when men Shout are out so perfect pair. you know when they're public and they're you don't have to put it all out there but you know just acknowledging that you're in love and feeling Sorry, those emotions yes it's it. part of the yeah game. yeah it makes you stronger anyway. I'm a grown-ass man, yeah. show. I've been for a minute. <laughs> grown-ass man, shout I love, all, I love all the rappers and the new generation that's coming up, and I love the music and everything that they're doing. I've, I've, I've been through 30 times already. I've been around the world 30 times. So everything they've doing, I've done, and I had a, I had a ball times. doing it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but certain, for real. Some, sometimes you got to leave certain things for others to have some fun with. You know what I mean? You can't be, Can you can't be a ball hog. Can you if social media existed? Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. I'd be dead. <laughs> been dead. I'd have been dead. He'd been so, reburied. They'd have took him back out, killed him again. If, <laughs> Instagram was popping from 97, no, no. we'd be dead. <laughs> the shit that we was pulling off was... No. Yo, it's just oh almost... God. It's just almost incredible. Like, yo, I was like... I was like, yo, I was my baby mom pull up, up, like it's crazy. So back in the day, there's no Instagram. So if you out of town in <laughs> North Carolina, you take a picture with a bitch yeah. that you was fucking with or whatever, and that's ninety something. Like you're not, it's never gonna come back. Now it's Instagram. People taking pictures of the pictures they had in '97, and they Word. put it up on the grandma <laughs> baby mom. Like yo. You remember this chick from like 1998? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> Fuck is this bitch? It's crazy what they doing nowadays. Like, damn, they made force in the gram on 98. Let's leave it. Yeah, let's That's leave it back long, in 98. No. Like, it yeah. wasn't there. Let's not even bring it back. But Don't um, you bring it wouldn't be right. I'm glad there wasn't no uh, Instagram in, in the days. We wouldn't have. We wouldn't have lasted. God ain't. God no ain't one would have lasted. Everybody, no. everybody, no everybody had a scandal with him. You did. <laughs> 
Yes. Everybody had a scandal with him. Like, yo, you got to handle your scandal, man. Like, <laughs> Graham, Graham was not allowed in those days, handle man. Handle your scandal. But <laughs> I, I feel like we need a full-fledged movie behind Dipset. Mm -hmm. Just like the NWA movie, right? Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Documentary. I'm with it. Well, we went. Well, right now we actually with the album we uh, have a, a super a, a, a super trailer microscopic right. mini form of the doc. Right. For right. the long form that we actually coming out with in in, in the new year. Um. So we'll package that up. It's about 20 minutes. Um. The long form doc actually will be out in about spring with the Diplomatic Three. Oh, man. Album that we going into. Yes. And, um, Y'all heard that. Diplomatic Cam, Three. Cam been on. Uh, Cam been on my ass about sitting down every day and just writing writing different things that we remember about a uh, thing because he has I think a movie situation. I've been talking to some movie people about actually putting together the Diplomat movie, which would be more of a, 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 a action flick. I mean, I've I've seen yeah. a lot of these these uh, movies, NWA and that, but the shit we were doing, people were gonna say these niggas is lying. Yeah, <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> like what? It, man. Oh my gosh! Is it? Man, we gonna be on part eight, and they like they still lying. Yeah, like <laughs> we gotta forget it. We got we've been on numerous accounts of being on the news from yes. different states to Channel Four, facts. Channel Seven, yes. cover of newspapers, Big shootouts, facts. shootings, oh, arrests, yo. shoot gun around. charges, controversy, oh. jumpings, uh, jump pillaging, outs. uh being bounces up, rap yeah. police, FBI mm -hmm. investigations, an yeah. uh, an incarceration, yes. being yes. shot, uh, yes. philanthropy, yes. giving back yes. to the hood, taking yeah. over the hood, yes. bringing Mariah Carey's to the hood, all type yes. of shit. Like you did, like, yes. we was we we was the we were the original bad boys, like the Detroit Bist Pistons. We really yeah. we really put on for our town. A, a Harlem and me and Cam was talking about that the other day. Like it's. It's incredible the things that we overcome in, 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 in the midst of what we're doing and the name of having fun. And we've been through some serious shit, but for some reason we hear and we smile about a lot of it. And we lost a lot of people. Mm. It's not a life that I would glamorize or push on anybody else or, or tell these youngsters that they need to get into because yeah. we were lucky. We were lucky right. to yeah. escape all of the shit that we <laughs> escaped. I mean, like I said, people lost their lives. Zeke was incarcerated for it. Joel's got his situation. We still going through certain things, but we, we here. We were, yeah. we were mm -hmm. blessed, and and we still blessed. I mean, but to put that shit in the movie is gonna be next level. Like, next, 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 next level. Remember, we from Harlem. Harlem. We didn't cross no bridges to get to the city. This is Manhattan. Like, we ran up and down these these blocks and these streets and went crazy. And and, and it's there. Like, we, you can ask anybody from grocery stores to to the to the biggest clubs mm. to the most posh restaurants to. Mm. The best hotels, like they, they love us here in, in, in this city. They, they know what we do. They know what we stand for. I mean, to put that shit in a fucking flick, it'd be oh gorgeous. Oh my god, I just got chills I when know. you said that. Who, who would you say is your icon, Harlem icon? This is a deep question because it doesn't have to be music. It could just be the greats came out of Harlem. Is there anyone or maybe a couple people that you feel so proud? that they were either in Harlem, whether they grew up in it, or their adulthood was in it, they rep for Harlem. Um, there's a lot of people that I admire in Harlem, I mean, but the the person that I, that I feel I, I, I'm most proud of and yeah. because her story is so long and shit, like, it's actually Chrissy, like, she's my oh. Harlem hero. I mean, it's not too many, it's people know about her, but they don't know about mm. her, like, cause she has a real, the yeah. real story of Harlem, like yeah, she, she gangster, gangster. Been there through three different eras, from what all these kids are rapping about now, who they wanted to be, even myself, from rapping about being like Rich Porter, and this was the life that she lived, from fast pace to driving cars, big chains, and she was a, one of the baddest chicks coming up that we was watch, that I was watching in the neighborhood, and you know I had a, you know I grew up having a crush on her, but she was action, she was all action, it was. She was like a pretty ass chick with a, with a, with a little boy inside of her. Like she went hard. I mean, and her and her face was always good in Harlem. Like she she represented for for a lot of strong niggas out there. Like you know what I mean. So 
One day people will hear a story, hopefully. But that's, that's a whole nother movie. That's one of my heroes in Harlem. You know what I mean? Not to mention yeah. a bunch of the hustlers that I grew up watching and, and some of the some of my closer friends that were braver than me, like my little cousin. When I'm a younger, he's about a year younger than me. I always say that because when you're younger, yeah. the person's younger. But <laughs> my cousin Doe, he's like a... Oh, yeah, Doe. He's like a, my knight in shining armor. When I, when I first moved to Harlem, he was like the kid that bring me outside when I was scared to come outside mm. in the projects when he was like 12 and 13. So it was like... He's like a hero to me, even still to this day. I tell people about that. But yeah, you know, Harlem is a Harlem is a dope place. There's so many stories, yes, though. So many, so many stories so that we many. could talk about. You know what I mean? And so many great people. And it's it's sad to see. Not sad to see it, the gentrification going on. I, I always tell people the only thing that I hate about gentrification is they move my people wild and they don't get yes. to give us the jobs that we deserve. Yes. I mean, but to see them building the place up and the landscape of it is is, is just more beautiful. I mean, Harlem has been I don't like run down and it's been, but it's been a ghetto for so many years. I mean. Do we keep it like a ghetto? Do we keep it run down? Or do we give it a facelift? The only thing with a facelift The facelift, facelift is, should be for the people who are from Harlem. Of course. At and they not, they not giving us the yeah. jobs that right. we deserve. And that's the thing that hurt me the most and, and hurts me the most when I watch it. But you know what I mean? Yeah. We're still here. Zeke, how about for you? Who are some of your icons? I, I, I would keep it in the same plateau. It would be like my grandmother and my mother because my grandmother used to run numbers for Bumpy Johnson and all wow. that. So. Yeah, we take it way back there. And from there, she ended up saving her money and getting cleaners for my uncle. And it just travels on and on and on from there, being that we were all hustlers. And we we made um, we made sense of the money to, to bring it to profit for for um, better gain. Instead of just always having drugs, we ended up getting like mm. a cleaners. And that, put, and that put me in that sense of mind of being a businessman. Like I got clothing stores down south as well. So it would be my grandmother and my mom's, you know what I mean? Just Damn. teaching me to, to hustle through life. Cause they, they started out with holes in their shoes, you right. know what I mean? But just being vigorous and keeping pushing forward got them to where they are now. But Zeke Moss, Zeke Moss is- Wait, 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 Jimmy, gotta hold on, hold but the Zeke, mic up. <laughs> Zeke Moss is, I mean, Zeke is, Zeke is my like dude, that. but we know he grew up so long, but Zeke, Zeke was more privileged than most of us yeah, coming up. I mean, because his parents hustled hard, but you know, his pops is like, Heart physician and right. his mom's wow. been a head, a head nurse since That's I've known Zeke. So he's he's been he's been right. the illest nigga around us for a long time. Like, but he, he it, it, it it showed us a lot also by mm. having them type of parents and me being so close to him and shit like that. Like, and they with all that money their parents is making, they live smack dead in the middle of the projects. Word. Mm. Smack dead in the middle mm. of the project. He coming out with years. all type of fly Versace LLB. He coming <laughs> to school and all type of shit. Be like what? But shit, yeah, man, it's just great, man. Harlem is a great place. I love it, man. I grew up both the Bronx and Harlem. I mean, I'm happy about this album. I'm, I can't wait for the concert. If you, if you get to what? come to that concert, you're going to have to Tell us some. Uh, it's, I'm uh, sure there's going to be surprises. We definitely yes? have a few surprises. Okay. Um, On deck. Just the fact that. We got it going down in Apollo on Black Friday. It's going to be super big, you know. Get your outfit out. Dip Friday. <laughs> Black Friday, they got them good discounts. Go get you a fly one. Yes, come, you'll need it. Come through dripping. You know what we're going to do in that drip. spot. You know what I mean? Make sure you got some gas with you. You know what I mean? Oh, they yes. Ser they serving drinks and, and sit, sit back and enjoy the ride. We're going to yes. have a few surprises. You know what I mean? But for the most part, the fellas going to be in there in real form. And we, mm. we got... We got a lot of energy to give y'all, man. We gonna give y'all give y'all this this Thanksgiving. Man, but I'm hyped. <laughs> what else I'm is there hyped. to say? Hey. That's it, man. I'm, I'm hyped. Man. I love it. I'm, I'm thankful to be thank, thank Hot 97. Thank you for having oh, us yeah. here. Hot 9. Shouts to Cam. Shouts to Joel. Shouts Cam, to the whole Jim. Diplomat family. <laughs> Joel.